Hi. Um, I thought, actually, since Josephine is no longer with us um, and has left only her astonishing books, that actually would be quite, um, that you might like to hear how we met Josephine, how Virago got involved with Josephine and how I especially met her. Um, Josephine Hart was very well known for Damage, and I did know about that, of course, and Sin, um, two books that were now reissuing the Virago Modern Classics. But I first came across her through her poetry readings, and she used to run these extraordinary things at the uh, British Library, and she'd get an amazing artists and um, actors to read. And her agent, Ed Victor, said to my then boss, um, come on, you've got to come to these poetry readings. And my boss said, oh, I'm not really on poet poetry readings. And, um, but he said, so he went, and off he went. And it, the night he went, it was Poetry of the Gardens. And Claire Bloom, the actress, was reading. And he came back sort of just, got to go, got to go, Lenny, got to go. And I said, oh, I don't really want to go, anything. And anyway, eventually I did go. And uh, it was exactly the same. I became a poetry evangelist myself. So I listened to Harriet Walter. I listened to Jeremy Irons reading Eliot, Auden, Sylvia Plath. Every event was absolutely crammed full. And the, the, aside from the amazing readings of the um, artists and of the actors, reading this quite astonishing poetry, the dead poets, she called, in fact, one of the papers called her, she said that she gives the dead poets society. Um, Josephine would introduce the, the poet and then bring our attention to some of the poems. And it was like, um, it, was, it was so intoxicating, actually. Um, and I just, I was so warm to the spirit. And I thought, how can we put that in a book? So the result of that was we then made two collections of poetry, one called Catching Life by the Throat, and the second one was called Words That Burn, and we had CDs of the actors reading on the back of them. Anyway, as a result of the, all of that, I got to know Josephine. And what a, um, an amazingly lucky person I am, actually, to have been near to such um, passion, such fearlessness, such excitement, such um, care, really, too. She really was incredibly well-loved. Along about this time, uh, Damage and Sin, were, which were with another publishing house, um, were not selling as well and were coming out of print. So her agent said to me, would you be interested in looking at these? And I said, would I? And then I thought, actually, the place for these is not just to reissue them, but is to put them in the Virago Modern Classics. So we now reissue Damage and Sin in the, in the extraordinary covers that you will have seen. And these were really life-changing books, I think, actually, in both cases, but most particularly damage. Life-changing for Josephine, of course, but also for, for the readers, as you'll see when you read them. They're very, very shocking books. And I think in some ways they come from the same um, place that, Josephine, uh, that, that Josephine's love of poetry came from. They're visceral, they're absolutely pared down, they're fearless. Um, they, she just wasn't afraid, I think, to look at the sort of the, the elements of, of what makes us human. And in some of the things that make us human are d destruction and a will for destruction. Sometimes we follow things that are, are definitely going to, to hurt us and hurt other people around us. And with damage, I th it is about erotic obsession. And what I thought was so interesting about this, and she puts it in the, her introduction, is she talks about the difference between erotic obsession and lust. And lust, she says, doesn't last, but erotic obsession is about wanting to be united with the thing you obsess, you obsess by. And I think that is quite interesting, and quite interesting to sort of look at that within a context of a relationship not just obviously the love object, but you know the family. Um, everybody who reads Damage has now turned up at my desk with their eyes just popping, saying, my God, I can't believe this. I cannot believe how brave she was to, to sort of strip down the, the human um, desires to this element. But also, she's honor she honors um, erotic obsession right to the end, it sort of takes it to its proper conclusion. No one is forgiven, no one repents. And um, it is a, a rather brilliant work, there's no doubt about it. Now, Sin is about another sort of, I was going to say sort of ugly emotion, but in a way, Josephine doesn't really cast judgment. I mean, what she's basically saying is, we have these emotions as human beings. We have erotic obsession, and we have envy, 
and then she sees what, what you do with that. So she doesn't say they're bad, she just says, what happens when you have these things? And when you allow them to be your sort of guiding light, actually, and that is, you know, it, life becomes only about that particular thing. Now, poor Josephine was dying when we told her that we were going to do in the Virago, put these two books in the Virago Modern Classics. And I didn't know that, she didn't tell anybody, and her death was a great shock to all of us. Um, but she, she, and she kept saying to me, you have no idea what it means to me to be put in the Virago Modern Classics, it's truly a great honor. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'm glad we're doing it for you. And she says, no, no, Lenny, you have no idea, it's really a great honor. And of course, I now realize that she knew that they would, um, that would, they'd be posthumous publications, that she would be dead before we were able to um, publish them. However, she did see the jackets, and um, she sent me, uh, when I sent her damage, she, she sent back an email saying, this is it, you've understood exactly. And she sent me a huge bunch of um, long stem red roses with a, with a little card, and the card said, your thorns are the best part of you, which is a Marianne Moore um, poem. Sin, we, we decided we wanted to turn into a sort of matching thing with um, damage, so we, on Sin we put beautiful lilies. And after, um, so I sent her that jacket, and again she came back an email saying, oh, you, you completely understand, not me, the designer, you completely understand the, um, the books, and again the, the sort of beauty and pared down quality, and a huge bunch of lilies arrived then for the designer. And that is Josephine right to a T, actually, kind of the, the queen of the big gesture, but, no, but not thoughtless, um, very considered, and very, um, very warm. I thought she was wonderful.